Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day three, the final day of Infocom 2017. I'm here with Tim Albright, founder of AV Nation TV. Tim? Good morning, Adrian. Good morning. You, you okay? Oh, I'm awesome. This, this has been a great show. Good. Yeah. Uh, we're here on the NEC Display Solutions stand, 1600. Uh, I suspect traffic will be light across the show floor today. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've got lots of time to walk the floor and see things, and you can talk to all the busy executives. So what have you got planned for today? <laughs> exactly that, is, is walking the show floor, uh, going to see a couple manufacturers specifically about uh, some of the stuff that we're doing. Uh, already talking about ISE 20, 2018, oh, wow. which is, okay. uh, doesn't seem possible no. in June, but we're already talking to folks about ISE uh, and the next couple of shows we're doing, uh, CDA wow. and then New York Digital Signage Week right. in, in the fall. Yeah, good. Yeah. So you like the, uh, the the show generally, I guess. I, in, I, in Florida? I do. do you no, like it more I, I, in Florida? I don't, don't like it? Florida in general. You know. I, I, I like Florida in the wintertime. Uh, Florida in, in the States is, um, once it hits about April, May, it, it gets a little bit hot and humid for me, mm -hmm. uh, personally. Um, but, but Florida in the wintertime is very nice. Um, but, no, I mean, the show is, you know, they, they bounce back and forth. Um, according to Infocom, the executives I've talked to there, because the, the states are, are is so geographically large, and you mm -hmm. have manufacturers on both coasts and yeah. somewhere in between, they, they try to do an East Coast show, which is, yeah. is the Orlando one. They try to do a West Coast yeah. show. There's a lot of talk of that. Uh, I think I was talking to Chris Regal from Scala mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and Stratocash uh, yesterday. And he was saying that he likes it here because you get a lot of driving, or not driving, flying traffic from Chicago, New York, and you get a lot of the big yeah. city corporate types here. And of course, for people like uh, NEC and others, you get a lot of houses of worship stuff that may not necessarily go to Vegas. True. Uh, but the, the, the other side is, the, the, the Vegas side, you're going to get an entirely different clientele and, and historically, uh, until the, and honestly, until the recession hit, historically the, the, the Las Vegas show was, was bigger for mm -hmm. Infocom. You know, you, they would get a, a number and then the, the Orlando show would be slightly smaller and right. the next year it would grow, grow again. How many, how many years have you been covering Infocom? Is it too long six, to remember? Six years, five or six years. Five or six years. Um, but once the re recovery started happening, it actually started growing every single year, yeah. right? So. Vegas would hit a number, and then the very next year, Orlando would increase on that mm -hmm. and back and forth. That'll be interesting to see what they do, uh, what that number ends up being uh, this year. Right. Uh, Infocom was saying that their pre-registration was, was high, uh, higher than last year. Uh, the first day felt very, very energetic, and there was there was a lot of traffic. Yeah, we felt that. In talking, though, to, to manufacturers in Thursday, Thursday was was a, was a, a, a little bit of a dip from, mm -hmm. from, from Wednesday. Uh, what that means for the overall number, you're not going to find out until, until Later 3 or 4 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, we've got David Lebuski, so maybe... I think if you can scroll that out of him, you've us got at, one on me. He won't tell us at 11 o'clock, I don't know, when he's on. No, he won't. So, um, so, tell us about Infocom, because you're probably one of only a handful of individuals. There's probably five or six people who have the chance and uh, what, to walk the whole floor mm -hmm. and, and to be taken seriously by all the exhibitors that, they, that you talk to. Well, I don't know about what that, have you but, seen? I, uh, the, the, there's two big takeaways from, from this year for me, and one is that if, if you didn't believe that audio and video, AV over the IT network was a thing, it this is, is the year, right. absolutely. I, I, I can't think... Is that down 100% to the SDVOE Alliance, or no. are there other things happening? There are other that? things happening. I mean, SDVOE Alliance is absolutely one, one component. Yep. HD base T shifting to do a little bit more network-based, yeah. right? The, let's be honest, HD Base T was a point-to-point. -point. You know, it, was, it was still you yeah. know, over the network, but it was a, a private network, right? It was, it was a point-to-point -point thing. Yeah. And now they're shifting uh, with a couple of key, key manufacturers, yeah. so they're getting in the network. Uh, Crestron doing the streaming, AMX doing doing the network thing, Kramer doing the network. Really? So that, that's okay. why I say it's, it's easier right. to set, tell you who's not doing it. Right. Uh, Christie it, it introduced their first um, their first networked uh, video product based on the SDVOE and oh, based really? on the okay. AppleVision. Well, that was launched at this show. Yes, sir. Wow. Well, yeah, about a week ago, but okay. yeah, this yeah, is the first time the show. you can really cool. see it. We had a great chat with the Crestron guy yesterday, and, and you know I don't really understand too much of what they talk about, but he had this great thing where they were, like, like NEC Display Solutions, there's only a couple of companies, I think, that really seem to get a handle on ISE and maybe DSC in the middle, and then Infocom itself. Mm -hmm. And these guys were announcing products at, um, in February at ISC in Amsterdam, yep. and showing them. They released them for launch like in May, but the real, the first time real people could get their hands on them is in June at Infocom. It was just very clever how Crestron yes. had done this whole thing because they were building up this excitement about the products that they were launching. Have you seen that elsewhere? I, I have actually. There, there are, talking to, to Mike Weidman, the, the executive director of ISC, 
he said there were over a hundred announcements at ISC. So mm -hmm. ISC has become the a, a launching announce. point right. for the year yeah. for these manufacturers. And then a lot of them are doing what you said. You announce it, you might have a prototype in yeah. the booth, all the press cover you know, the press cover it and mm -hmm. say, hey, look at this new, new cool thing happening. And then by the time May happens, you've worked out all the bugs, hopefully, in the yeah. firmware and this, that, and the other. And by Infocom, you're able to say, this is really ready, right. we're shipping in 45 days, yeah. we're shipping in 30 days, or Have we're you shipping seen, now. I, again, you, you, you know much more about this than we ever will, but Milestone AV, they've got their own little prototyping area. Yeah. Have you, have you, that's amazing. Has anybody ever done that before? Um, there's been a couple of, of folks who have done it. Draper has the, the ability to do that. Right. Um, they call it like an milestone. innovator lounge or something. Yes. But these prototypes are like real rough and ready type things where real customers, like you can go in and go, yeah, that will work, that wouldn't work, yep. suggest this. That's amazing. But it, it is, but it, it also points back to the fact that a lot of these manufacturers really lean on their integrators and, and the folks that, that use their product to give them feedback. Right. Right? Help this me the, help you. Right. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So you said that was the first thing, was the AV over IP and the IT link. Collaboration is going to be the second thing you've seen, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. and, and there's, there, there's one specifically that I still don't know what to make of it. InFocus, uh, a company that is known for their monopads, which is a collaborative interactive right. board, right? They released a soft codec VTC software. And it's not so much that, because there's a lot of folks that are in that space, it's the price point of that. Okay. $5 a month for 10 seats. Wow, okay. You want you want 50? Yeah. 10 bucks a month. Wow. That, I hate to use this word, but that is disruptive. Right. Right. I was thought you can say it was game changing. No. But it's disruptive. But <laughs> I don't think cool. it's, yeah, yeah, game changing, is, <laughs> you have to do something else. But uh, but that is disruptive wow. for that space. Yeah. Right, when you compare that to the price points. And of, they could do like that, Zoom. why? Because of the cloud or because of? Uh, there is a very smart uh, network person years ago, I want to say it was Robert Scoble, who said there's going to come a point in time when processing and, st and hard, hard, uh, hard drive storage is virtually free. Yeah. And I think that we've gotten there. Right. Because once you develop the software, yes, you have to recoup your cost. Mm -hmm. Your ROI has got to be there. Right. But once you've done that, then you can do five bucks a month. Yeah and still make money, yeah. right? Well, we saw, see again, I've, I've been saying to lots of the guests on the show as well, the, the huddle rooms was always a surprise to me. It just seemed to yeah. catch us by surprise. It was the first thing at ISC that we saw. Yeah. Collaboration's a big story on the NEC stand. So, I mean, but everybody seems to have a huddle space room or a private one. Well, and that's, that's, different that's actually names. maturing. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was probably two years ago, uh, and I want to say it was, it, was, it, was, it was Crestron and NEC had some, some products as well that they started talking about you know, these small little spaces getting away from the big comp corporate right. conference rooms yeah. and giving folks for a, a two or three or four person meeting where yeah. you and I can go in, yeah. pop up our laptops, throw stuff on, up on the, yeah. on the display, and we can have a meeting, right? right. We can collaborate together. Yeah. Uh, and instead of taking up an entire you know, large conference room, now customers can take those exact same spaces okay. and make three or four yeah. out, of, out of the yeah. that conference. Now you're going to walk the show floor for the next two or three hours yeah. before the AV Week. Yes, sir. Which runs at two o'clock today, two local today. time. Yep. Um, that's your regular Friday AV Week thing. Yes, you're sir. just doing it live. Who have you got on the show you. this afternoon? <laughs> apart from, <laughs> okay, plug. Yeah. Yes. Uh, apart from the, <laughs> to fill a gap. No, stop it. Who else have you got on the show? Uh, so we've got everybody from David Labuskas, who is the, 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 the head of Infocom, yep. Mike Blackman, the head oh, wow. of ISC. Okay. Some heavy hitters then, apart so from we, me. We're, we're starting off with you got with the first two. round, you got the yes, heavy sir. hitters, and then you got me to fill the gap at yeah. the end. <laughs> well, then we, we have, no. Um, uh, manufacturers, consultants, uh, integrators. Right. Um, we've got a, a, an engineer, a friend of mine, who uh, works for an integrator out on the East Coast, and he does something unique for us uh, every year. Uh, he, he looks around and he looks for swag, he looks right. for the giveaways. Okay. And then we correlate how much giveaway, how many giveaways oh, wow, are on okay. the floor with the economic health of the industry. Right, okay. uh, it's an interesting <laughs> little take, it's you know, some, somewhat fun and kitschy, but yeah. you know, Harry's, Harry's swag report is something we always Harry's, do. So we're looking for Harry's swag report. Yes. That sounds great. But no, it's, 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 we, the one thing that, that we pride ourselves on is, is what makes AV Nation unique, we think, is that everybody that does anything with us and the folks that we, we try to have on are integrators yeah. and engineers mm -hmm. and consultants. These are the people yeah. who work in AV every single yeah. day. And passionate about the Passionate industry. about it and they can give you the why to what's going on here, mm -hmm. right? Why does it matter that X, that yeah. this company did this? 
Why does it matter? This how many how this? many shows have you done from how many uh, broadcast podcasts have you done from the show this week? Because I, I met we've George produced, Tucker who was yes. helping you on the Tuesday before the show opened on yes, a couple sir. of things. So, what, so how many we, have you done? We produced we will produce uh, four shows by the end of the day. Uh, everything else we've done is, is really about just going to the booths and then yeah. having people to our, our production suite, interviewing them, talking about what they're bringing. Um, the one thing that uh, that I, I squeeze our, our, our PR folks on is I, I don't want to talk to your folks unless it's something new, mm -hmm. right? Because just like you, we go to ISE, we go to these other ones, and if somebody wants to find out about a product that's already existing, they can, they can go watch something right. from ISE yeah. or from, something sure. from DSE. I want to talk about what's new. What, okay. what are you doing that's new and innovative? And, and, and we'll talk about that. Is there, last question, is there one thing in your next two or three hours of walking the floor before AV Week? Is there one thing that you're going to look out for? Is there one stand in particular that you want to go and search for? Or one product or something you've heard from somebody else? Uh, not, not, not one product. I'm, I'm, what I'm looking for is, I, I, want, I really kind of go back to the AV over I, IT thing. I really want to kind of drill down and talk to some of these folks that are new in this space and find out why. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and it don't give me the, well, it's a, it's a revenue generator, you know, it's, it's a, another revenue yeah. stream for us. Why did you, you know, decide to go down this road, and why did you just decide on the technology that you decide, decided on? Because right. I'm really, really interested in that, because yeah. there are so many different platforms, and so many different ways to get from point A to point B, yeah. with AV over, over, the, over the network. I want to find out from these engineers, people who are smarter than I am, why you chose this product over that product. Right. Good. Tim? Yes? Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, sir.